What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on a 1967 VW Bug, which has a charging issue. It's not charging. Um, it's very little, less than a volt if anything, uh, and most of the time not charging at all. So I wanted to just run quickly through, as simple as possible, a couple of the things I've done to test this out and what I ended up finding wrong with it. There's a few videos going around that really just confuse things, and so I want to let you know what my process was. So the first thing I did is I just wanted to double check that I didn't have any uh, direct shorts, meaning I didn't have any positive carrying wires shorted to ground, as if they were stripped or the generator was shorted or something like that. So the way that I tested that is I came back here to the generator and unhooked both wires and I made sure those were just up in the breeze. They weren't laying on metal. They were just tucked up so that they were up in midair. I put a clip from my voltmeter on the continuity scale. So what that is here, you can either use ohms or if your um, voltmeter has a diode setting like mine does here that gives you a beep, that will help even more because you don't need to be watching the meter you can just listen for an audible beep. So for example, if I were to touch the probes together right now, we get a beep because there's a connection there. So with the wires unhooked, I'm just checking each wire to ground to make sure that it's not touching ground. Right now I've got them hooked up, but what that would look like is I put this on the red wire, unhooked, and then touch my other probe to ground, such as the generator case, and just make sure that it's not shorted. None of these wires, when they're unhooked, should show ground. Make sure they're unhooked, though. That's important, because if they're hooked up, just about all of them will show ground, because you've got your whole circuit connected through the battery, which is grounded. The next thing I did is hooked those back up. I came up into the car and turned the key on to ensure that my generator light is functioning. The generator light on this 67 is the lower left, right next to the zero on the speedometer. I think on later years, it's just a centrally located light, um, but it's just a, a dim glowing light when you turn the key to the on position. You wanna make sure that your generator light is working because it's part of the circuit and needs to be functioning. The next thing I did, just to be sure, disconnected the battery and tested it, made sure that I had good voltage at the battery and that the battery tested good. Mine tested good, but it was only 60% health. I credit that to a lot of testing being done and the engine being run for a while uh, with no charging. And so it is a brand new battery, but it's just testing weak because of that. Uh, but we do know it's a good battery. The next thing I did is checked all my grounds to make sure that those were in good shape. And that's where I found my issue, which I'll explain here in a second. So of course we have a new ground strap. We want to make sure that there's actually a good connection to the body of the car with that ground strap. So just because the strap's good and the connection on the battery's good doesn't mean it's making a good ground and grounding the vehicle. So the way to do that is you can either use that continuity setting again and check for a beep between here to the body. So when we're doing that, we don't wanna actually just test the ground strap itself from here to here. We wanna check from here to maybe a clean bolt way over here to make sure that this ground is actually being circulated throughout the whole car. So that's what I did. I have a ground from negative here over to the body of the regulator here, or the chassis of the regulator. So that's good. The next thing I did is our DF wire here. This is providing a ground to the field of the generator. So basically we have power and ground to and from the generator. This is our charging wire attached to the D plus. This is our DF wire or our grounding wire in order to make the generator function, it needs to be grounded. So what I did is I checked to make sure 
I had a ground here by checking from this wire to ground, and I do. And where this wire hooks in, right here on the voltage regulator, also needs to have a ground. So I just checked from this spade to ground again, and there's no ground. So I'm not getting any ground to the generator. And where this can be confusing is if you hook this wire up and you check for ground, you will have a ground because this is providing a ground back at the generator where it's connected. But you need to unhook this and double check. What we're doing here is testing the voltage regulator. Double check that this is grounding or has continuity from your DF spade to the case of the regulator, and mine does not. And just to confirm what we're finding here, let me bring you over to a brand new regulator. Where did I put that? I just had it and then I kicked the camera on and now I've forgotten everything. Right, right here by the old one. So if we double check with this, our DF spade is the one on the same side as the lug. There's a screw lug where your D plus wire attaches. This is the, the DF spade right here. So if we double check from there to the case, we have continuity. So what that's telling me is this voltage regulator is bad. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, swap it over, and I'll kind of show you briefly how the connections go. There's good diagrams online. But I'll swap that over and we'll see if we can improve on our 0.7 volts of charging voltage while running. So going back together, before we bolt or screw the voltage regulator to the frame, you're going to attach your D plus this is the large red wire coming from the back of the car to this screw terminal. And in my case, it's labeled D+, plus, but that's going to be that 90 degree bracket with a screw, not the brass colored one that's attached or has continuity. We want to make sure it's the isolated terminal right here. And I went ahead and added some heat shrink to really insulate that just in case at some point it swung down and was to touch down here, that would be a dead short. So that kind of looks like that, the way I've got it curling around to the bottom. And next, we'll just go ahead and screw our voltage regulator back to the body. With the voltage regulator reattached, we just want to double check as we go here that we have a ground between the case of the voltage regulator and battery negative, or in my case, since I know that I have a good battery negative connection to the frame of the car, I'm just going to double check that and we're good. So now we'll take our DF wire, the small green wire, that's going to go on this top spade, like so. We have our small blue wire which feeds the generator warning light that goes on this bottom spade down here. And I'm going to just bend that a little bit to make sure that it's out in the open and it's not going to curl around and ground itself or touch the frame of the car behind it. And then we have two more large red wires. One feeds the fuse box. So we can go ahead and attach that. And they can go on either spade here, either large spade up at the top, because these are both directly connected to each other. You may have to bend those just slightly in order to get clearance to fit them both in. And then this last large red wire just runs across the back seat here over to positive battery. Now with everything hooked up, I'm going to go ahead and turn the key to on and make sure that our generator light comes on. You can see there that it does. We're going to start the car, and because I'm not there with you watching, uh, I'll just kind of let you know if anything 
smells hot or you see a little bit of smoke or anything uh, seems funny, this is sort of at your own risk. <laughs> um, so be careful uh, and shut it off immediately. Unhook your negative battery if anything goes crazy. But we're just gonna give it a shot here. Make sure we're in neutral, of course. And now, I'm gonna switch my voltmeter to DC volts, which is the solid line. The wavy line is AC, but we're measuring DC at this point. And you can go anywhere along the line here. We could go straight to the battery, but I can't reach. We could go from our cable leading to the battery and ground. That's all we're doing. We just want to check, is the battery charging? And so I'm going to go from the cable going over there to the battery and body ground here. And what we want to know is as we increase throttle, are we increasing the amount of charge to the battery? So I'm going to do that, or try to do that. Let me get some clamps in place here, and we'll take a look. Okay, I've got my voltmeter just with a couple jumpers to the battery, plus and minus. We'll go ahead and start the car. And we were at 12.02 without running, or 0.04, I can't remember. So we should see the voltage continue to climb as it's charging. As it kind of stabilizes, I'm going to give it a little bit of gas, and we should see it continue to climb even a little bit more. Another thing that I'm watching is the generator light is out. If that was lit up, that would indicate an issue. There are times at a very low idle that it will just kind of dimly flicker, and I'm okay with that. I like a low idle. And what that means is the generator is just not spinning fast enough to generate enough of a charge to put that light out. Let's take a look here. So we're at 12.12. I'm going to give a little gas. And we're rising. And I think what I'm going to do is actually drive the car and then stick the battery on the charger for a little while because keep in mind, we're starting with a 60% health bat battery. And so we're not 100% there for a proper test. So I'll do that, show you the results here in a second. <laughs> 